Hello, my name is Sean Sperry and I am with the IBM Systems Group. In this video we're going to talk about data protection for Microsoft Hyper-V and specifically we're going to talk about backing up and restoring Hyper-V virtual machines uh, in a Windows failover cluster. So just to get started I'd like to kind of start with some background. Uh, first of all, most users of Microsoft Hyper-V in a production environment uh, tend to run it in a cluster and they do this really to uh, maximize the hardware that is used by the virtual machines and specifically because you can do live migrations that allow you to move virtual machines from one node in the cluster to another uh, without a drop network connection or any perceived downtime for the user. So it's a very economical way to run virtual machines. Now data protection for Microsoft Hyper-V which is a component of Tivoli Storage Manager for virtual environments does support running uh, and protecting virtual machines in a Microsoft cluster. Uh, we do support for do support machines in uh, running on clustered shared volumes and uh, on SMB uh, shares. Now when you set this up you're going to see that uh, you need to use proxy node support on the Tivoli Storage Manager server so basically what this is going to boil down to is using the as node option when you back up the virtual machines. So the data is going to be stored in the same node on the Tivoli Storage Manager server no matter where the virtual machine happens to be running in uh, the Microsoft cluster. Now as far as backing up and restore I put together a, a, a brief set of notes here which is uh, kind of an outline and some recommendations. Uh, first, as I just mentioned, you should use the as node option when you're backing up Hyper-V virtual machines to the Tivoli Storage Manager in a uh, server. And what that's going to do is cause the data to be stored in a common node no matter where the virtual machine is uh, in the cluster. It's also recommended that you use the Virtual Machine MC or VMMC management class and the VMCTLMC management classes that you uh, when you do the backup to ensure that the virtual machine control files are stored on the disk based storage in a uh, Tivoli storage manager server. So if you are using tape in your environment you at the very least want the virtual machine control files on disk. Now when it comes to doing a restore, uh, a virtual machine can be restored to any machine in the cluster uh, using by accessing the AS node to which you back the machine up. Uh, but there are a couple of uh, caveats and suggestions uh, for when you do this. First, you should remove the virtual machine cluster cluster role from Microsoft Cluster before the restore is initiated uh, and then when you completed the restore go ahead and add it back to the Microsoft Cluster as a, uh, a new cluster role and we'll see doing that uh, in the demo. And then it's also recommended that the virtual machine if you are going to do a restore of a virtual machine that already exists that you go ahead and shut it down before you do the, the restore. Uh, although uh, data protection for Hyper, Microsoft Hyper-V will automatically shut down virtual machines, it's just a good practice to shut it down manually to bring any in-process application activities uh, to an orderly stop. Now what we're going to do here is we're going to do a demo of a restore of a virtual machine in a cluster. And we happen to be working with a Windows 2012 R2 Hyper-V failover cluster. It happens to be a two-node uh, cluster, so we just have two nodes in our clusters. 
and our virtual machine is going to be stored uh, on a clustered shared volume or a CSV volume for this demonstration. And then finally, we've already done the backup of the virtual machine, uh, just so you wouldn't have to sit through that. And that was done using data protection for Microsoft Hyper-V's incremental forever methodology. So you'll see us restoring uh, a incremental forever backup back to the cluster. So that being said, let's go ahead and take a look at the demo. Okay, so we're ready to do our demo now. Uh, what I'd first like to do is show you that, give you a little tour of the environment. Uh, we are running on one of our Windows 2012 R2 Hyper-V hosts. This one happens to be CSI Hyper-V. And I will go ahead and bring over Failover Cluster Manager just to show you that uh, we have a two node cluster here. And as you can see, we have a CSI Hyper-V and a CSI Hyper-V2 that are our physical nodes. And we have four uh, Hyper-V guests, which are all up and running. And as you can see, two of these are on CSI Hyper-V, two of them are running on CSI Hyper-V2. Now, I've gone ahead and, to save us some time, just gone and done some backups of these machines. So what I'd like to do is first show you the TSM server. And as you can see here, we have nodes defined, CSI Hyper-V and CSI Hyper-V2, for the Hyper-V hosts, or physical machines in the cluster. And we have a proxy node, CSI cluster, which is where we're defined our as node in the client and where we're storing our data. And if we do a queue occupancy, you can see that all of the data for our various guests are stored on this CSI uh, cluster node. So in order to demonstrate the restore, what I'm going to do is bring up Failover Cluster Manager and I'll go ahead and shut down this CSI R2, 2012 R2 guess and we'll let that stop. And then I'll go ahead and remove this uh, machine from the cluster so that I can go ahead and do a restore and not have any conflicts. And note that this machine was on CSI Hyper-V, so that is where I'm going to restore it. Now, what I'll also do is go ahead and just to show you what the restore looks like, I'll go ahead and bring up Hyper-V Manager. And here you can see I have a... view of the two physical nodes in our cluster and I'm going to go ahead and just to show you what the restore looks like delete this CSI 2012 R2 guest from Hyper-V Manager and the files for this machine were stored on a cluster shared volume so what I'll do is I'll go ahead out and uh, that volume is under cluster storage volume 1 and as you can see here, I have the machines grouped by their name. So I'll go ahead and delete all of the disks and metadata associated with it, that virtual machine from here. So now I'm ready to go ahead and do a restore. Uh, so what I'll do is I'll go ahead and start the Tivoli Storage Manager backup archive client and just get ready to do a restore. And as I mentioned, what I'm going to do here is restore the machine back to its original location. Uh, I am on the physical node CSI Hyper-V, but the files for the machine are going to actually be put on the CSV or the cluster shared 
uh, volume and the machine is going to be registered in Hyper-V Manager on CSI Hyper-V on the physical node. And then after the restore completes, what I'll do is I'll go ahead and add back in the resource to Microsoft Cluster Manager. So we'll just wait a minute for this to start and then we'll do an actions restore VM and here you can see even though I'm on a side of the cluster where one two physical nodes are running because of my proxy node configuration I have back access to all of the virtual machines that are backed up so I'm gonna go ahead and pick my 2012 R2 uh, guest and as you can see here I have a full and an incremental backup I'm gonna go ahead and restore the incremental and then I'll just do a restore and I'll restore it to the original name and the original location since I deleted all of the data I'm not going to be prompted and I'll go ahead and click on restore uh, now this restore is going to take a few minutes because of the hardware we're running on uh, and so what I'm going to do is go ahead and pause the restore the recording while this restore takes place and then I'll start it up again once the restore completes okay so that restore has completed now so what I'll do is I'll just go ahead and click OK and you can see here if I go back out to my cluster shared volume uh, my virtual machine files have been restored so there are my virtual hard disk my virtual machine metadata and my uh, snapshots and if I go to Hyper-V Manager, you'll see that Data Protection for Hyper-V has gone ahead and registered my machine back with Hyper-V Manager. Now, what I'm going to do is, since I removed it from Cluster Manager, I'm going to go ahead and back to Failover Cluster Manager and note here that it did not register it back with Cluster Manager. So I'm going to go right here and just add the virtual machine back. I'll go ahead and configure a role, do a next, and I will pick a virtual machine. And as you can see here, Cluster Manager has gone ahead and found the one virtual machine that is not registered with Failover Cluster Manager. So I'll go ahead and select it and then add it back in. And it will go ahead and add it back as a role into Cluster Manager. And here you can see I have success. So now I have this machine. It is back up again and I can just start it as I normally would with Failover Cluster Manager and uh, the restored virtual machine will boot up and I can go ahead and uh, and log on to it or do whatever I want with it uh, including do a live uh, migration. So that's an example of restoring a machine in a Microsoft cluster. I hope you found it useful and I look forward to seeing you in another video soon.